Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to walk you through my current planner setup. I'm trying really hard not to call it my 2022 planner setup because I think we all know I like to switch things up. Um, but at the end of the year, I set up a bullet journal in a Lloyd Term 1917 A5 dot grid notebook. And I set up a Hobonichi Weeks Mega as sort of like my main planner and archive for the year. And January has come and gone and I'm in neither of those things now. They just weren't working. I still can't quite verbalize it efficiently other than to say they weren't sparking joy and there's a few things I was trying to add in and just sort of felt constricted like I wouldn't have the room to do so. So I've made a few changes and I'm currently in a three book system and I thought I would just kind of walk through these three things, what purposes they're going to serve and how they will more or less work together for this year. So for those that are probably wondering what's happening with my Hobonichi Weeks or what happened to my A5 bullet journal, I'm shelving them for now. They may come back out in a future month. We'll see how it goes, but right now, this is the most settled I've been all year. <laughs> I've been in this for two weeks now, and I think it's going to stick, so I thought I would share it with you guys. Okay, so I guess we'll just start at the top and work our way down. The first planner I have is a Hobonichi Techo. This is the English version, and my cover is from Hobonichi. I believe it's the 2019 one, if I remember correctly, but this is replacing my uh, Phantom Blue Hobonichi Weeks as my work planner. I knew last year I needed more space for my work plans, and I thought about trying to squish it in with my Hobonichi Weeks Mega, but that planner, I barely had enough room for everything. I think I ended the year with 10 pages to spare, in my mega and so it, the natural inclination I think was set up a separate planner. What I started to realize as I was in that Hobonichi Weeks is that I, I don't need a weekly for work. I really just need a daily and I was really forcing myself to try and use a weekly like that would make me more productive but at the end of the day I've been using a daily planner since 2018 for work. Last year was my first year trying to use a weekly or a vertical weekly to kind of list off my tasks. But for me, my work planning is primarily task management. I use digital tools. I work remotely. So almost everything I need to do or share has to be digital. But I like to write down my actual tasks so that I don't lose them in my email. I feel more intentional about it. And this is just my brain on paper when it comes to what I need to accomplish. And any notes I might need to remember, but not detailed notes that I would need to share with my team. I will be doing a separate video on this, but just like a quick rundown, I use my monthlies to keep track of like important deadlines. And then at the end of each day, I'm categorizing using mild liners, what project I spent the majority of my time on and summarizing that, that I'm hoping will help me see, okay, I am doing my primary job function or these projects are taking my time so I can ask for help a little bit more effectively. In the daily section, following, I use the Sundays as sort of a weekly running list. And again, you'll see a lot of mild liner. I'll talk about this more in the actual setup video, but I do a lot of color coding. It just helps me see where my time needs to be managed this week. But I just do a brain dump of month of weekly lists on the Sunday. And then following that, I use my daily. I split it essentially into two columns. I have my most important to do is my schedule for the day and time tracking, even if I don't have a meeting. And then uh, any sort of tasks I need to do. And then at the end of the day, I'm trying to sort of write down like a positive, small win, things like that. And I also highlight where my day majority was, and that's the color that I use on my monthly, along with kind of when I logged in and when I logged off for the day for reference. My tabs are Midori Index Clips. I will list that down below. They're just metal reusable tabs. 
And yeah, this is sort of how my days are working. I feel very productive in this already and I'm glad I'm back in a daily for work. I've been doing all my writing in here using a Uniball 1 in green black. It's a gel pen, 0.38. Really liking how this works. So next planner I want to talk about is my main planner. And I thought I was going to use pocket rings for a hot minute here, but I think I quickly realized that I just get out of control with rings and I try to put all these rules in place mentally. I spend money like it's nobody's business <laughs> when I'm in a ring planner and I just don't. You know, I'm not going outside of my means, but it's not where I want my money to be going. Uh, I'd rather be saving those things up for like a new computer, for example, a new iPad, some stuff I've been wanting for a while. So I found myself drawn to and uh, back in an A6 notebook as a bullet journal. And I was inspired by Brittany from Wise Coffee Break on Instagram, so I will put her handle in the description box. She was bullet journaling in an A6 notebook at the latter half of last year, and I think she's since moved into the A6 Take a Note. But I actually bullet journaled in an A6 Stalogy in the first half of 2020 for about three months before I kind of moved down into the rings rabbit hole as I will call it. So in a way this is a, a nice revisit. This is a Midori MD notebook again in A6 size. It's got like a cream cardstock. The paper is very cream vanilla color with like a blue gray grid. I went with the grid. I believe they do offer a dot grid version. There's you know one bookmark in here. This has 176 pages and it handles fountain pen really well and I like how smooth it feels. There's definitely some ghosting. Again, I will do a full-on flip through of this so you can see my setup closer, slower, and in more details, but this is essentially my bullet journal. This is where any of my future planning is going to go, my day-to-day, -day, my monthly setups, habit tracking, notes, lists, all that kind of stuff that I would have normally had in my Hobonichi weeks and my uh, Blake Term 1917 bullet journal, all gonna end up in here. This is the first thing I touch in the morning, the last thing I touch at the end of the day. If I was traveling for the weekend, this is the only thing I need to take with me. Um, this is sort of the, the planner. This is where I'm being the most functional. I'm allowing myself to be a little bit messier in here. I still add some creative elements and I've kind of had to think outside the box when it comes to A6, which is something I really appreciate. I'm leveraging like printables, for example, which is something I've not done before in a bullet journal. These are all from Peanuts Planner Co. if you kind of see them as I'm flipping through, but I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth, but overall, I'm just really liking how this feels, the vibe, the portability, the size. It is creative when it comes to the layouts for me, but it is purely functional. My tabs, the metal ones, again, are those Midori Index Clips. These came from a Midori MD notebook, uh, I think in the A5 size, and this paperclip here is from Kubo and Lucy. But yeah, really liking this as my like main planner. I anticipate I will get six months in this particular notebook. And this is sort of my biggest thing when it comes to bullet journaling. I always want a full year in one place, but I've sort of made peace with that. I want all the room, no fear of running out of pages, whatever I need functionally. I'm just going to bullet journal until I run out of pages and I will set up a new one. And the reason I feel like I'm going to be okay with this is because I've reintroduced the Hobonichi cousin. So, um, frequently asked questions. Uh, I am using fountain pen in this. I'm using my Pilot Vanishing Point inked with Dia Tremendous Archive ink. Gel pen does behave pretty well on this paper as well. This cover is from Hobonichi. It's the camp cover from 2020, I believe. Yes, might have been 2021. I don't remember, but I bought it because it was 2020. It has to have been. <laughs> I don't know. Someone will fact check me. Let me know down below. But I bought this when it released from Hobonichi last year or the year before. It is like a canvasy cover, and it reminded me of Animal Crossing New Horizons before they did the Animal Crossing collabs. That's why I picked it up, and in general, really liking it. This is from Aloe's Creative Corner. Uh, this pen is from Kubo and Lucy. I believe it's a collab with Wild Moon Paper Co. But yeah, main planner, really liking this, um, loving the size and the weight of it. Finally, I have my Hobonichi Cousin. One of the things I recognized that I was missing in my lineup last year was a journal. Um, I think I tried to journal on a lot of different things, but none of it really stuck. So 
thinking through when was I most consistent with my journal, it was in a Hobonichi Cousin. I have two completely filled up Hobonichi Cousins where I've journaled on almost every single daily page. And, you know, I missed it. There's some consistency bias. I've got four of these on my shelf already. So adding a fifth one is like super satisfying <laughs> to see them all lined up. And my 2021 Hobonichi Cousin is like maybe 60% filled in. I reached for it off and on. I did some journaling in it, but I didn't commit to filling it out. So because I'm using a bullet journal and I know I'm only going to get like six months per notebook here I might hang on to these just you know for a little while for fun but I'm kind of reintroducing this concept of this is my functional messy planner and then this is my hobby journal and archive planner so at the end of the night I come back in I reference this I fill in my monthly my weekly and my daily any information I want to keep long term gets transferred into here sometimes I might just put it in here first if I don't want to write it here and then transfer it but for the most part I find that transfer process really meditative it is a creative creative outlet for me it helps me decompress before bed it is like 20 minutes every night that I've never regretted doing it's very fun for me and it's also 20 minutes without screen time that helps me you know kind of get ready for bed if that makes sense so again, I will be doing a full on flip through of this planner. I'll probably do this one next because it has been requested over on my Instagram, but in general, really liking the setup. I'm pretty much using it uh, exactly how I did in 2019. So I have my index here for my daily pages in the front. My monthly spreads I use as a highlight of the day along with a hybrid of any kind of future planning that is coming up. And then my weeklies, I have sort of bounced around. Some of these I've used as like a planner for that entire week, but where I'm settling is this is where I am memory keeping and I memory keep in sort of a hybrid of it looks like it was a planner. I've just been journaling this way for a while now. Um, so here we're the current day is the third. You can see that little bit, a couple things written in, but essentially blank. So in the evening, I'll go through and write down when my meetings were, what we did, what I sought out to accomplish, and then my memories at the end of the day. In the back, I essentially uh, daily journal on each page. I try and journal for about half the page. And then I do some sort of collection on here as well and a collection if you're not familiar with bullet journal terms is essentially saying like this is a running list I need to keep track of this is information I need to archive it's collecting like information onto one spread so you can find it again uh, the first few pages here are primarily trackers for me that I'm trying to kind of backfill I think in reality the trackers are going to be more up to date in my bullet journal so maybe I'll photocopy and tape them in at the end of the year if I don't keep these up to date but so far I've been doing pretty well kind of bouncing back and forth. If I have any ephemera that I want to keep, this is where it would go because I will for sure keep my cousin long term at the end of the year and I'll hang on to the bullet journals for as long as makes sense. But if space becomes an issue, then the, the cousin's going to kind of win out because I've learned that reflecting on my journaling has actually been really good for me. I struggled with my mental health a lot last year and I was trying to figure out why and I was rereading through some of my old journal entries from previous years and I recognized that hey this journaling is really really good for me. Helps me keep my head on straight and work through some of these things internally and get feelings out of my system and onto paper and in general that has been you know really good for me. There is a blank page there are unused space so not everything is perfectly full but in general um really liking this it feels like coming home i use this planner for two years like really consistently and i'm i'm just excited to be back in it it is sparking joy in a whole new way if you are new to hobonichi products i definitely recommend the uni jet stream in 0 0.5 or 0 0.7 it's a ballpoint pen that is like really good entry-level pen uh, for the Tomoe River paper, I've kind of balanced between that and a fountain pen because I feel like I'm getting the most out of the paper. But overall, really, really liking this. Again, I will do like an in more depth talk through, flip through of kind of the setup and exactly how I use this. Maybe talk about some of my planning routines as well if you guys have any interest in that. If you've made it this long, let me know which planner you are most excited to see more of on my channel. And uh, if you made it this long, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.